the first couple of topics tonight are all um, uh, a lot of gender related stories this week some some interesting ones first one really surprised me actually seven and i the parent company of 7-Eleven uh, has announced that they are going to triple female executives to 30% by 2025. In Japan, that's a remarkable number. I mean, the number, I think that the overall percentage of executives, um, do they have it here? It's something like less than 10%. Uh, in fact, I have to put in my password to show the whole thing. Another interesting thing that people, I remember my, 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 my sister mocking me for saying that 7-Eleven is a Japanese company. It actually is. Uh, I know that, yes, 7-Eleven was started up in America, um, and uh, it's it's, it's, a, it's exactly what's happened with Yahoo, for example, American company that started up, um, included a few branches in Japan that were wildly successful while the brand in America kind of died out. And in the end, facing uh, eradication and bankruptcy and shutdown and whatever in America, the Japanese, the very successful Japanese franchisee, rocked back over to America and said, hey, sell, sell it to us. We'll take you over. So both in the case of Yahoo and in the case of um, 7-Eleven, the, um, the Japanese sort of offshore affiliate, the, the sort of Starbucks, you know, the Japan branch of Starbucks came back and bought the parent, bought the mothership. Uh, that's what happened with 7 and I like 20 years ago now. Um, you know, 7 and 7-Eleven wasn't doing so well. And so 7 and I Holdings, Ito Yokodo, a big department store chain, went and bought out um 7-eleven and um yeah yeah they they, they are um basically so it still exists in america they're being propped up by uh by the japanese company but uh, basically if you go to 7-eleven like anywhere in asia now or whatever yeah they use all the american branding and everything but everything in the convenience stores uh they've actually got like the sandwiches and the bentos and everything it's all because it's run by the japanese company 7-eleven is now a japanese company um even though it started out originally as an american brand so yeah i always find that kind of really cool um, the fact that I find it fascinating that they are confident setting that target and you know it's not as I've talked about on the show before it's not easy to just suddenly you know pick 30 percent you know pick however number of women at random or to hire people from outside who don't know anything about the company and that's usually not the Japanese way there aren't executives like in America there are there are, there are professional executives who just seem to, to be like rock stars going from company to company some often not doing very well company to company either but um, that doesn't really happen a lot you do get outside directors and stuff like that but generally they're selected from within the company which means that when you want to improve the underrepresentation of women within executives and companies from like 10 percent to 50 percent or whatever um, you can't just choose them you got to actually have you, it takes like 20 30 years to do that and, and a lot of companies certainly from my time in japan are hiring more women but i remember my first job in japan at deloitte uh consulting at the time deloitte tomatsu consulting uh, it doesn't exist anymore in japan actually but uh, yeah when i when i joined it um there were like 100 hires and like five women um I think the, the numbers have improved a lot since then, but obviously it's not going to, you know, so what do you do now? Those people are getting into the realm of becoming executives, but uh, even out of those five people, like two or three of them married co-workers and, and, and left within a couple of years. So that's the problem. So it's great that 7-Eleven is already in the position, I guess, to set a target like that. And given that they are a member of Kedonren, of the big uh, business association, um, that's actually a pretty aggressive and prominent sort of a target. It pr puts pressure, good pressure on other companies. So it's good to see. But um, yeah, this is one of the areas where you can say Japan is, I don't like to say Japan is ahead or behind on things because it's all situational, but Japan really is genuinely behind on this. It hasn't really tried or considered, uh, you know, gender balance and representation an, an issue um, like for decades after the rest of the world sort of did. Um, it does make sense. I mean, you know, that uh, a company like the most supposed service industry um, I'm sure of the employees, they make up a pretty high uh, women and, and, and you know, 42. I'm, in fact, women make up 42% of customers at 7 Eleven Japan. I mean, everybody uses 7 uh, Eleven, so I'm kind of surprised it's not actually 50. And if you consider who goes to the supermarket, well, again, if you consider 7 Night Holdings owns many supermarkets and stuff as well, I'm kind of surprised it's actually not more than 50%. But Certainly, uh, a, th this is the argument for companies that talk about gender representation, the idea that, you know, if they're completely detached from their customers. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, it's a good sign of the time. So that is the first story. But uh, Migs Vim, you, uh, Japanese 7-Eleven, well, yeah, it, it, it's pretty good. I mean, out of the Japanese chains. Um, I remember when I was first living in Japan and my mum was worried that I was eating properly. And I said, listen, let me show you rock bottom in Japan. It's a convenience store. 
it's vegetables you know the, the bentos are awesome it's it, it, you can't really go wrong so yeah you should definitely do that